This is KTXT FM Lubbock. The Raider, 88.1. Hi, this is Jeremy from Trying Toy Guns, and you're listening to the Raider 88.1. 88.1 FM, the Raider, KTXT Lubbock. Keep it locked to the left, because we are the voice of Tech Tech University. Hello and good morning, Texas Tech. It is Friday, February 10th, 2017, and welcome to another glorious episode of Friday GMTT with the boys. Hello, everyone. Hello. Good Say morning. Hello. What's going on? You so- guys sound so excited. <laughs> I am so glad to be back here once again with my wonderful crew. We got the musical mastermind himself, Mr. Andy Koki. How's it going? How's it going, everyone? We got the hype man, Mr. Brandon Big Poppy Medina. Oh, yeah, we have The hype man, I like that. And also, on sports, we got the sports guru himself, Mr. Andrew Marks, giving his expert analysis on the latest in sports. Hello, Andrew. Yes, sir. Good morning. And Haley is not here because she went to College Station on purpose. So, replacing her... Which is like the third best college town in Texas, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to the Hub Hub City, Lubbock, Texas. Got him. Uh, We got DG, the boss man himself, giving the news and weather update himself. It's going to be a fun episode. I think we're going to have a little bit of fun, but let's kick it off with some news. Boss man, what's on the news today? Well, this is DG filling in for Haley up to Grove, who's out of town. Safe travel. Come back soon. Hopefully we'll hear her on Wednesday. This is your KTXT News Update. An internal report at the Department of Homeland Security says the U.S.-Mexico border wall could cost nearly $22 billion and take over three years to complete. Reuters is reporting the DHS estimate is over $9 billion more than President Trump has previously estimated and $6 billion more than what Congress estimated. The lion's share of the U.S.-Mexico border is in Texas, 1,254 miles of the 1,900-mile frontier. The longtime agent of former Astros pitcher Roger Clemens is facing a charge of soliciting prostitution in Houston. USA Today is reporting Randy Hendricks was among 178 alleged Johns detained in Harris County during a weeks-long sting operation that concluded on Super Bowl Sunday. The newspaper says the 71-year-old Hendricks responded to a Craigslist ad January 10th and met a Harris County deputy posing as a prostitute. Hendricks was once named by the Sporting News as one of the 100 most powerful people in sports. Former Baylor President Ken Starr is being eyed for the Trump administration. ForeignPolicy.com reports Starr is being considered to lead the Office of International Religious Freedom. Starr is best known as the prosecutor who investigated the sexual activities of President Bill Clinton. He was ousted last year as president of Baylor University over that Christian school's sex assault scandal. Taking a look at the National Weather Service forecast for Lubbock and vicinity. Sunny today with highs in the low 80s. Southwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Mostly clear tonight with lows in the mid 40s. Southwesterly winds continuing and sunny and breezy tomorrow. Patchy blowing dust expected Saturday. Highs in the upper 80s forecast. Looks like west winds 10 to 15 miles per hour starting off tomorrow and increasing up to 25 miles per hour with higher gusts by tomorrow afternoon. Mostly clear Saturday night, lows in the 40s, and much different weather expected on Sunday with the passage of a cold front and much colder with some sort of precipitation expected early next week. Most likely some sort of frozen precipitation, but uh, 
just the old DG personal opinion is I don't think we're going to be seeing snow amounts like what they're expecting. Still too early to tell, but we'll keep you posted as Monday comes in. Currently in Lubbock, mostly cloudy skies, 46 degrees. Wind is from the west at 8 miles per hour. That's creating a wind chill of 42 degrees. It's now four minutes past 8 o'clock. Now back to Goodfellow Fridays here on Good Morning Texas Tech. Good fella Fridays. I like that. Good That's fella good. Fridays. We're going to trademark that, make it a new thing. We're going to exclude Haley from the group. TGIF. We're going to make it's it good fella just Fridays. a guys only show. How, do, how does that sound to y'all? Sorry, that Haley. Great. Fridays are for the boys. Fridays are for the boys. The boys That's are what back. I like. You know, hit. you may be getting rid of the only reason why some people listen to the show on Friday. Hey, what? now. I'm hey. still here. What? <laughs> Koki's still here. Wow, We're talking boo. about <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so as I always like to do, I usually like to complain about the weather, but today's weather was actually pretty nice walking up here. Yeah, it was Nice, cool. solid, 48 degrees. Should, it said it's going to get it. up to like, what, 84 or something like that? It said it's going to be up in the 80s today. Yeah, it's going to be a little hot, but what I can dig it. It's not too crazy. What happened to winter? Um, well, Monday, it changed I was his mind, like Cody. snow, like Monday's supposed to be like crazy. Yeah. Well, see, my prediction is oh, that it's going to snow let me hear, let me hear. in the morning. Okay. It's all going to melt by the time class starts. And like the university always. is going to still make us come to class. Like always. Yeah. Like always. That is my prediction. I'm willing to bet money on it, but I won't because I'm broke. It's like Groundhog Day doesn't even matter anymore. What What's wrong with America now? I don't understand. <laughs> as long as I don't have to drive in it, I don't care. <laughs> That's true. As long as I don't have to drive in it. I can't handle it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I, I don't know, man. I'm from San Antonio. I see snow like once a year. That's in Lubbock. Oh, so, poor yeah. baby. Driving, yeah, no, dri- like, driving, driving know that, what snow driving is. Driving in that, I have, I have, an, I have zero clue. Were you there for like, when it snowed in Dallas? Yeah, Anna? yeah. How was that? How was that? Like, were you? Well, okay the thing like, in Dallas really is we, we don't get snow; we get ice, and so it's, it's very, very dangerous to be out on the road. So, I assume that I've never actually been in Lubbock when it snowed, except last uh, what was it, April first? You remember? Oh, on it's, April it, Fools! It, yeah, it, it snowed. snowed on April Fools for like thirty minutes. That was that was the only time I've ever been in Lubbock when it's actually snowed. I think I've Mother Nature was like, "Ha ha, you guys thought," and completely went away. No, <laughs> no more snow after you that. You thought? <laughs> you thought? We got pranked. Anywho, let's talk about the wall, shall we? So twenty-two. Let's talk about the wall. Interesting. Tra- how do you transition into that? Smoothly? Uh, let's be honest. Yeah, Matt Damon gonna be a great movie. Yeah, I wholeheartedly <laughs> agree. Uh, Twenty-two <laughs> billion dollars, man. It's a, it's a hefty. Is that price. wait? It's is that in the price. news? Like again? Or yeah, DG uh, just went over it. Oh man! Just, yeah, you just. Uh, we were we were just talking. Clearly, about someone was not paying attention. We were, well, because we were talking about the wall while he was talking again, about I the wall. I'd just like to take this opportunity to point out why, if you get rid of Haley, no one's going to listen to the show. <laughs> if you're not yourself listening to your own radio show. Does it matter? I was actually talking the, about the wall while you were talking about the wall, so that's a cool incident. But yeah, the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Gokey, everyone. Andy Gokey, man. <laughs> Keeping you up to date with the latest what in uh, what's going on in the new Trump administration. Yeah, seems What, wild. there's oh, a I wall? Thought, I thought we were just huh? talking about walls. So How much are we paying so, for it? So we heard that it's going to be, what, three years in the making? Is that what yeah, he said? about three years. That yeah. seems so three quick. Plus years. I can't wait so to play wall what ball. They don't dis- <laughs> what they don't uh, describe or explain is how they plan to build a wall along the Texas-Mexico border where that border is a river. How's it Ingenuity. Uh, so like, <laughs> like fill it up with like Trump take steaks. some brain power. Trump steaks? Yeah, fill it up with Trump steaks and other things that people aren't going to buy. And then, you know, it's going to be delicious. To be qualified up, to build, build, build this, do you have to go to Trump out. University? Well, yeah. yeah. Obviously. Why would it even be a thing? <laughs> you have to be... Enrolled in Trump University, so unfortunately we cannot take part in building the wall. But let's go ahead and go into a quick music break. Let's start off with Future Islands, their song entitled Ran. We'll be back in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. It's Friday GMTT. Hello, Facebook. What is going on? Let's check out what we got in the comments section. Veronica Marks says, good morning, Red Raiders. TGIF. Yeah, that's, that's my mama. Mama Marks, I couldn't agree more. Thank God it is Friday. Cause, man, what a busy I was going to say this joke on air, but I guess we'll just save it for Facebook Live. When we're talking about the wall, I was going to yeah. jump in and say that Dark Side of the Moon and Wish You Were Here were way better Pink Floyd albums than, than the wall. Absolutely. But uh, 
didn't get it in. Sorry. Some people swear by the wall. It's interesting. But yeah, I'd, I'd have to give it to Dark Side of the Moon, yeah. personally. What a great album. What a great album, indeed. I actually saw that uh, a laser light show, Dark Side of the Moon, over the summer. It was cool. It was just a laser light like, show. No, cool story, like, bro. Like, like, like <laughs> they were, they were like there showing was like pictures. Lasers? It was like pictures with la- like and like pink Floyd lasers. lasers. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. It sounds pretty awesome. Not gonna lie. So coming up after this, we're gonna talk some sports. Uh, sports peeps, do y'all want to give a quick sneak preview? Brandon, what you got? Um, what you got on sports, man? We got a lot of talking about uh, obviously the Super Bowl. We uh, of course we gave our predictions, a little preview, and then now it's all. It's all ready to go. Andy Koki just received a mysterious package. Mysterious package. Well, actually, like three of them. Yeah. I wonder what it is. Maybe oh, we'll do an unboxing if we have time. Oh, unboxing. You know. unboxing. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll wait for the unboxing. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, right, we'll people. also preview, uh, I guess, Kansas Tech. We'll yeah. talk about that. It's a oh, big absolutely. game coming Ooh, this that's weekend. That's a huge game. Number three, Jayhawks. going to be at the United Supermarkets Arena. It's going to be a sellout crowd. you got to believe oh, it. Oh, yeah. For sure. All right, yeah. Well, let's. And then we got... Well, we're going to go ahead and go back on air. Don't go anywhere, folks. Sports coming up on GMTT. Welcome back to Good Morning Texas Tech. It's about that time for your sports update. Let's get right into it, starting with the NBA season. In the East, we have Cleveland at number one with 36 and 16, followed by Boston, Washington, Toronto, Atlanta, Indiana, Chicago, and recently Detroit has pushed itself into the A seed. In the West, we got Golden State at number one with a 44 and 8 record, followed by the mighty San Antonio Spurs, the Houston Rockets, the Utah Jazz, the LA Clippers, the Memphis Grizzlies, the Oklahoma City Thunder, and of recent, the Devils. The Denver Nuggets have also pushed their way into the top eight in the West. In other basketball news, beloved ex-New York Knicks Charles Oakley was in hot water earlier this week as the ex-Power Forward got into an altercation with security at Madison Square Garden, as well as Madison Square Garden chairman James Dolan, where Oakley was seen pushing multiple people and seemed to be very upset. Oakley was taken out of the building and later charged with three misdemeanor counts of assault and criminal trespassing. In other interesting NBA news, the NBA has come out and said it will start cracking down NBA NBA team's official social media accounts for ridiculing opponents and referees. Also, one of my favorite players of all time, Magic Johnson, is, quote, working to call all the shots for the Lakers. However, last week on GMTT, we gave you a bit of a preview for the big game, a.k.a. the Super Bowl, and now it is official. Tom Brady has his fifth Super Bowl ring, and the question needs to be asked if this cements him as the best of all time. Stay tuned for that discussion. Finally, the end of sports update, we have some Texas Tech news, because Texas Tech is looking to bounce back from a loss at TCU when they face number three. Kansas tomorrow at 1 p.m. Make sure to get there early. Get yourself a good spot. And also on Monday when they face number six Baylor. That is it for your Texas Tech sports update. Thank you guys so much. Let's go back to Good Morning Texas Tech. All right. Thank you, Mr. Medina, for that sports update. Good stuff. Fellas, let's talk about Super Bowl just a little bit. I know we could talk about it for days, but let's briefly touch on that. What a game. What a game. Greatest comeback of all time. Yeah, easily. Easily in, in football. In football, for, it was the best football football game in the Super Bowl for sure of all time. Absolutely, like there's no discussion. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just you know when you think it's coming to an end, you think you know the Falcons have it in the bag. Out of nowhere, they start to choke, and Tom Brady just lights up that field as he always does. Five-time Super Bowl champion. Yeah. Four-time Super Bowl MVP and a four-time league MVP. Best of all time. 
quarterback-wise for sure. Now the debate, I think, comes to, is he the greatest player of all time? And that really is a toss-up between him and Jerry Rice. Uh, yeah. But he is absolutely, no doubt, he has passed Joe Montana. He is the best quarterback of all oh, time, in my opinion. Absolutely. I, I would completely agree. I think in this game, uh, two things kept me positive, because I picked the Patriots to win last week. Right? Did you now? Yeah, and, and Andrew picked the Falcons, so two things kept me positive. Oh, boy, here we go. Two things kept me positive. It's that Tom Brady's Tom Brady, and you never can uh, throw him out True. of discussion. And then... Um, Andrew Mark seems to have some bad luck when picking teams. Oh, I, so. It's the kiss of death if I pick you. I'm <laughs> so, sorry. so I was like, you know, let's see what can happen. But uh, me and Andrew were like talking uh, while this game was going. We talked on our show as well on Monday. And man, dude, it was just, it was wild because although like you think like it could happen, the odds of it happening were just like so slim because it was 28 to 3 at one point. Yeah. And then, like every other, um, I guess, finals or series or Super Bowl, this this year they blew it. They blew the yep. lead, and to, it's to, the year to of the choke. It's the year of choke. I'm telling you, crazy. The Vikings stuff. started five and zero. Oh, exactly. <laughs> uh, Brandon's Vikings. Let me. Yeah, and then you know, the Cowboys ended up the same start. place as the Vikings, watching the Super Bowl from <laughs> yeah. home. But hey, uh, some some players who stood out in this game: James White, the running back. Had about uh, 140 total yards and three touchdowns. He was huge for them. And shout out to our boy Danny Amendola, oh, yeah. Red Raider, Ooh, coming through in the up. clutch. Guns a up. touchdown and a two point conversion. He had two touchdowns in the Super Bowl two years ago. Guy is the definition of clutch for the New England Patriots. Absolutely, for sure. couldn't Absolutely. agree more. Let's talk a little bit about NBA because that story that you mentioned about cracking down the social media kind of intrigued me a little bit. How do you feel about it, Brandon? Um, I think. Honestly, I don't think it's that big of a deal. They're not throwing shots at players that are like terrible. Um, it's usually just like all fun and games. They'll put like memes of players or yeah. emojis or whatever the case. I think what they're hitting on is uh, the Portland Trailblazers were calling out uh, Chandler Parsons a lot, and rightfully so. And, right, and rightfully so, Chandler <laughs> Parsons is kind of overrated, yeah. obviously. But um, I think a lot of teams do, and I think it just adds to the fun nature of the NBA. Whereas the NFL is like the no fun league, so I think people yeah. like, people enjoy like the memes and stuff of NBA official accounts. But I can see if like you're killing like. Referees, because obviously it's not going to help anybody's case if you like have that next referee the next time, because they're going to know you guys, you know, were like ridiculing them on social media, and they might be a little more tempted to give you guys bad calls or just uh, bad refereeing. So, but I think for players, I don't think it should be that big of a deal. You should have thick skin. I, I think it's uh, kind of ridiculous though that they're cracking down on social media accounts, bad mouthing officials. Yeah, you guys, you got guys like LeBron and Russell Westbrook and people like that, Kevin Durant, who are basically out there just cussing out the officials on the court. Yeah. Who cares about the social yeah, media? Yeah, we're worried accounts? about social media, yeah. I mean, they're media. It is their job to talk about what's going on and things like that. They need to they need to back off on the situation in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, you know, in sports, it's always good to have a little bit of, you know, smack talking in there. That's what you know, it's part of that competitive spirit and to kind of crack down and start like watching that like a hawk. I don't know. It's a little bit concerning. I think especially in basketball, like basketball history is like obviously now it's like you have the Rucker Parks, you have like all like the New yeah. York basketball, the Brooklyn stuff like that, but like you know, uh, it's always been known to, like, uh, I guess, kind of get, like, that blood going when you talk that trash on the court, and it's always, like, kind of a trash-talking game. So I think it's fun to see, like, the teams take it uh, to that next level on social media and kind of, like, bring in fans and let fans uh, have a little viewpoint on it as well. Yeah, for sure. R well, gentlemen, we got to wrap this up real quick. Real quickly. Real quick thought. Tech, tech going to beat Kansas on Saturday? Yes, tomorrow? I was actually about to ask oh, out. Whoa. Quick thoughts. Do you think we're going to win? We're always good for one big upset every yeah, year. Yeah, one big upset. So I'm saying either Kansas or Baylor, it's happening. For okay. sure. I'm gonna, gonna say, I'm gonna say we win, and the court's gonna be rushed. I'm oh, gonna say we I'm win, ready. Koki. Uh, I say we win. I really do. I yeah, think we got this. We're gonna we're we're up for an upset. All right, upset city. Let's get it done. That's this weekend coming up next for music. We got Mr. Elevator and the Brain Hotel. When the morning greets you with a smile, we'll be back on GMTT. Do not go anywhere. Keep it locked to the left. All right, Facebook, we got you for three minutes, so we would love to hear your thoughts if you guys are watching, if you think we're going to take on Kansas and beat them, or if you think Kansas is going to just run us over. Yeah, We'd love to hear up. your thoughts on that, but uh, I'm feeling pretty positive. I can't wait for that game. Hopefully yeah, we we'll, take we'll be, down Kansas. we'll be looking at a, a top five pick in the NBA draft, uh, as always. Kansas is always good for us. And other first-rounders. And other first-rounders. Frank Mason, sure. all those guys. Yep. 
Should be very interesting indeed, but you know. Like but the next three said. games for Tech, they got Kansas number three in the country. Baylor is also top five, I believe, and West Virginia is top twenty-five. Yeah, we don't exactly we, have an easy schedule. We for have, I think, either is it the fourth or fifth hardest schedule left in the entire country. So, dang, should yeah. be interesting. But I think, like I said, uh, we're due for one upset. So, this is when uh, this is when boys are going to become men. Yep. If they want to, if they want to make the NCAA, do, uh, NCAA tournament, they're going to have to win. I think two out of these next three games, and it's going to be very tough. We'll just have to see what happens. These, uh, as far as music stuff, we got that coming up next. Yeah, we uh, got a few things going Mr. on. Mr. Andy, what? Uh, give us a sneak preview well, for what they can expect. The NBA All Star Celebrity Games coming up. They just got released. Uh, the rosters and the teams are divided by uh, Michael Smith for the West, and then Jam- is it Jamel? What is it? Is it is it Jamel from uh, Sports Center? Yes, J- Jamel Hill. Yeah. Jamel Hill Jamel. for the East, and they're both uh, dividing up the coaching. But it's going to be it's going to be pretty good. I'm going to talk about it later. Uh, Migos and I love McConan feud kind of simmering down, and then Aretha Franklin is uh, going into retirement finally. Not she finally. I don't right. want to say finally, but like <laughs> finally, like, like uh, you, you were looking for. Are we, de- are we debuting the Andy Cokey <laughs> Music News music bed as well? Oh, I'm yes. excited. Yeah, yes. I chose it myself. Get a little bit of cool background noise. I'm excited yeah. for that. Should be interesting stuff. I'm looking forward to what discussion lies ahead from here on out. Celebrity games are always interesting. Yeah, they're, they're always, always kind of a hit or miss. Like, they're either awesome or they're not. But Yeah, sometimes you got some ballers, though. Yeah, like I've seen Kevin Hart and oh, uh, J. I, Cole in past games. I for Kevin games, Hart like, to not down. be there. Same. Little, a little Bow Wow can ball. I don't know if y'all saw that the celebrity game, but he had like 30 Yeah, Master P and Master Little P, Bow Wow? Master P will Hey, ball. man, he's like Mike. Mas- <laughs> oh, <laughs> Mas- oh, hey, Master P played college ball, so y'all better get ready to see something. Hey, you're right, though. You're right. All right, folks. Well, we're going to go ahead and sign off here on Facebook. Don't go anywhere. Music and entertainment news on the way with Mr. Andy Koki. So don't go anywhere. Keep it locked to the left. Thanks for watching Sweet. Facebook. Good morning, Lubbock. Uh, My name is Andy Koki, and I am the music director for KTXT. I'm going to give you a little rundown of my favorite highlights in music news. Starting off, uh, it's a little related to uh, the sports guys around me, but NBA All-Star Celebrity Game 2017. uh, The rosters have been announced February 17th on ESPN in New Orleans. There will be a showdown between the West and the East consisting of... Mark Cuban, the Dallas Mavericks owner, Wynn Butler from Arcade Fire, had a great performance last year. Uh, Nick Cannon, I mean, he's done music in the past. Master P and then Little Bow Wow, Fat Joe as a coach as well. Uh, There's going to be a lot of great, great people going to be a part of it. Next up, we got Aretha Franklin finally saying that she's retiring this year. She's working on an album with Stevie Wonder currently. She says that she's going to be touring or uh, final couple of uh, months, and then she's calling it quits. She's had a great, great, uh, wow, I was going to say year, but uh, career. Uh, uh, I would say that she's very, very influential. Lately, um, you know, she's been a little bit controversial with, I guess, uh, what is it, the national anthem lately um, in, in the spotlight. But, you know, 
you can't you can't last forever. She's had an amazing career, but um, she's finally calling it quits. And then lastly, I got a little Atlanta beef going on between Migos and I Love McConan. Recently, I Love McConan came out as gay, but I guess some words got mixed up because in a interview with Migos, they said that that's whack, quote unquote. Uh, then they issued an apology saying that they love all people, straight or gay. Um, this is a big deal, in my opinion, just because both of these uh, hip-hop acts are representing Atlanta in a way that is really, really uh, in a, going in a positive direction, especially with the Atlanta Falcons going to the Super Bowl. Everyone, and also uh, Charles Gambino's amazing hit show, Atlanta, so I just feel like the whole spotlight on the world, or the U.S., is kind of shifting towards Atlanta, which is a great thing. There's a lot of talent coming out of there, so I like that they resolve this quite quickly. And uh, those are the headlines that I feel like were pretty cool. Oh, I would like to also put out that Skrillex... Honorable mentions? Honorable mention. Uh, Skrillex finally uh, went back to his first band of 2007, Emo Kids Rejoice. From first to last, he came back to sing one of their uh, new songs, Make War. Uh, there's a video online. It's pretty. It's it's a, it's just a, a cell phone video. But I mean, if you are a huge fan of emo music, early emo music, or a huge fan of like the early internet generation, uh, you'll find some pleasure seeing that he's back with his band. So that's all I really have for emo today. Emo kids rejoice, indeed. Rejoice. <laughs> so if I understood you correctly from earlier, you said Aretha Franklin, Stevie Wonder about to drop an album. Uh, yeah. Best it's gonna collab. Be hot. I am. I'm buying that. No, absolutely. And if they tour, I am there. Metro Boomin on the. <laughs> I, have, I have been waiting to see Stevie Wonder for forever, man. I love Stevie That'd Wonder. That'd be so cool. Oh, I'm I'm buying that. What else? Celebrity game thoughts, gentlemen. Uh, I'm I'm all in for Fat Joe. For yeah, sure. Fat Joe is a coach. And Mark Lean Mark Cuban, back. with your bad hit, man, you have no business being in this game. I'll put my money on Fat Joe as well. I think he can ball. I think he's going to come out yeah, swinging. We'll see what we. Is, is Kevin that. is Kevin Hart gonna be in this? Andy's I hope oh not. man, I really hope he's not. I think Same. I think Kevin Hart is just like Did he retire. That, that was retired. That was. He's like, I'm retiring from the. the NBA I feel like also. it's that kid that you give too much sugar to at a party, and yeah. like he's like he like talks to everyone. Like I'm I'm so done. <laughs> and and honestly, so him done being in the celebrity game, I know he can ball, but it's just it's kind of five years overdone. Yeah. He's been doing well, it. For like so is Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon's so bad. I don't know why he's always Nick in there. Cannon's just like kind of. He's, 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 he's constantly in a state of almost being relevant. But not quite. That's yeah, the way right. I view Nick Cannon. Let's all, let's all remember that situation. Nick Cannon had a back tattoo with Mariah's name on it, then it got covered up. So he'll always have that boy Mariah was, That on boy is wilding out. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. If you could uh, kindly escort yourself outside <laughs> of the premises, that would be yeah, wonderful. So you fired. Win uh, Butler and Nick Cannon uh, will be representing the East, the West. Like I said, Mark Cuban, Romeo Miller, Master P., uh, Aaron Sanchez, celebrity chef. Wow! So I think I was super sad to hear about the Migos actually thing. cooking up some stuff. I was like super. On the court. <laughs> I was super sad to hear about the Migos thing, man. They're so huge. I yeah. mean, to have that happen, I think it's just gonna like deter a lot of audience from. I don't music. know. I feel like they kind of just say whatever, what, whatever's want. on their mind right then and there, and they don't really like you really care. But you know, once they, I feel like once they got the backlash going they're like okay yeah that, that's not cool it's especially with an amazing album that you just put out like i feel like they gotta represent themselves in that way they can't have no beef yeah man you just gotta stop being bad and bougie oh Whoa. that's their that's their song uh, 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 more terminology <laughs> like that on the way in later segments we'll touch on that later but uh what, what else we got for headlines so we got celebrity game we got migos saying some naughty stuff aretha franklin aretha franklin and skrillex back from first to last Amazing. I didn't know Skrillex was still relevant, man. I haven't. What do you mean, Skrillex? Black Hearts like Rejoice. Still... I'm not in a dubstep, man. <laughs> I, th I think Skrillex is still like. It ain't my thing. Like, Doesn't always... he have his own. He has as like his an own EDM label. fan. Like, yeah, he does. As like an EDM fan, like, he'll always be considered like one of the best performers. Like, I've been to his concerts, and like, it's insane. As a DJ, he's Humble awesome. Beginnings. Super great. I Humble love him. Beginnings. But, uh, you know, what are your thoughts about him returning to his roots, I guess? I think it's really cool. I mean, some people might want to forget their emo days, but. You know, he had a lot of success with From First to Last, and it's really cool that he shows some love. Obviously, he's still friends with uh, the guys in the current band, or the touring band, so, you know, being a big celebrity like he is now, uh, you know, it's it's really cool that, like, he's not ashamed of what he used to do, or he's just, like, too big for that, so... 
I just feel like it really talks about his character, especially with like a. I feel like emo's coming back. It's about that time. That uh, you think he's gonna make a comeback? I mean, I don't think it's, it's making a, a comeback, plan, but Coker. people, but people are like not ashamed anymore. It's like, yeah, I had MySpace, so what? Like, I mean, in an age where everyone's kind of expressing themselves in their own kind of way, I can see that you know, be like, yeah, I, I still bumped the My Chemical e- Romance, emo, so what? You know, emo already is back. If you just get on Twitter after midnight, man, it's some dark <laughs> stuff on there. <laughs> he's got a point Pe- there. People air their grievances and what's going on in their life, and they get re- really dark. I was talking about like eyeliner and taking a photo. Some of eyeliner. <laughs> 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 Uh, not actual like emotionalness, but yes, easy, yeah. breezy, beautiful. <laughs> I, know. I need to dye my hair, and I need to take it with a really bad camera in the yes. mirror. On a dirty mirror. <laughs> On a dirty at a high <laughs> angle, from uh, from high the top. Angle. So Make everyone... sure your mirrors are really dirty. Got to be as authentic as possible. Wearing your Hawthorne Heights shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a name I haven't yeah. heard in forever. Hawthorne Good Heights. Band. All right. Well, that's enough of music and entertainment news. Thank you, Mr. Koki, for that You're update. You're so welcome. We're going to go to a music break. But first, before we move on, we're going to go to a half-hour news update with Maria. Maria, what's on the news today? Okay, this is KTXT. I'm Maria Corte, and here are your morning news. A Texas judge is explaining her decision to set bail for kill and murder suspects at $4 billion, possibly the highest bail ever set in the United States. Bell County Justice at Peace, Claudia Brown, tells Temple Daily Telegram she was making a point that the legal system is broken because the bonds are, for suspect are saved way too high. They are forced to remain in jail until the cases go to trial. The newly elected Democrat says everything in the system is broken. The bond amount for the accused murderer, Antonio Willis, is $1 billion higher than the previously believed to be to, on record. The $3 billion bail amounts up for New York real estate in their Robert Durst. Texas State Representative Gene Wu of Houston believes that this year is a year that Texas will stop prosecuting 17-year-olds as adults. The, the Austin American Statesman reports that Texas is one of the only seven states to continue the practice following a new U.S. Supreme Court decision that marks the age for adulthood at 18. Wu and another Houston lawmaker have filled a pair of bills that would put 17-year-old suspects back into the juvenile justice system. He tells the newspaper that the cost for increasing juvenile arrest would be offset by crime prevention. The Texas Law Commissioner, George P. Bush, is asking Senate Finance Committee to remember the Alamo. Bush requests $75 billion over two years, sorry, that was a million, helps restore the Texas Shrine and panel seem receptive of yesterday's committee meeting in Austin. Bush told the budget writers that the city of San Antonio and private fundraisers are up to the task and remain committed to the $300 million restoration project. This was the Morning News. I'm Maria Corte, and here is DG with weather. Good job, Maria. The National Weather Service forecast for Lubbock and vicinity. Sunny today with highs in the low 80s. Southwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Mostly clear tonight. Lows in the mid-40s. Southwest winds continuing and sunny and breezy with patchy blowing dust tomorrow. It is West Texas after all. Highs in the upper 80s Saturday with west winds 15 to 25 miles per hour and gusty tomorrow afternoon. Mostly clear Saturday night. Lows in the mid-40s and a big change coming on Sunday. Looks like uh, much cooler weather expected. Highs and lower 50s with a 50% chance of precipitation, possibly snow, Sunday night into Monday. Currently in Lubbock, mostly cloudy skies, 46 degrees. Wind is from the west at 8 miles per hour, creating a wind chill of 42 degrees. Here's Animals by Delicate Steve on the Raider, 88.1. Hello, Facebook. Hi, Facebook. Welcome back. As you may have been paying attention earlier, Koki received a mysterious package. And I what we're going to do, we're going to do a quick unboxing. Yeah, so you can see what it's like to be a music director. Opening mail with Andy Koki. Andy, what's your first gift? Ralph Barron, I got some uh, big packages right here. This is the largest one that I can. Um, if you're mocking me, that's a horrible person. <laughs> that was the best thing I've ever heard. So, uh, we got documents. I got, we, got, uh, we got documents. Andy Koki gets the mail and the oh, female. We oh. got some kind of poster. Wow. What is that? Wow. I'm trying wow. to my own, uh, best Owen Wilson. Show the camera. Show, show what you got. Oh. It's 
kind of yeah, pretty. It's a, a bit of a glare, but it's cool. Wow, it's, just, it's a poster, yeah. Okay, what's uh, what's the poster for? Is it an artist? Um, I think it's for Martha, a thing that's called Martha's Miss. Okay. Mi- myth, myths. Myths. Um, annual music festival. So it's going to oh. be a lot of uh, peeps. Julia Holter, H- Julia Holter, a la la's, Perfume Genius, Wise Blood. Ooh, there's a lot of good people. Uh, West or uh, Far West Texas in Marfa, Texas, uh, March 9th through the 12th. Ooh, that's intriguing. Next pa- up, package number two. Package number two. This is most likely CDs, y'all. So, you know. Let's see what else you got. Okay. Oh, we got uh, Molly Birch. Ooh, this is going to be top five for us this week, you guys. If you don't know what Molly Birch is, she's an amazing artist. Oh, man, I'm excited for this one. All right, y'all. Well, that was a quick unboxing with Andy Koki. We got Dabbing at DG. Do not go anywhere, folks. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Friday GMTT, and it is time to return to one of at least my favorite segments that we do here on GMTT, where we take common knowledge, common terms, memes, etc., that is commonly used in our pop culture, and we throw them at our boss man, Mr. Derek Ginter, and test him and see how close he can get to guessing the accuracy of are memes and or pop culture terms. Pretty self-explanatory. So, DG, are you ready for some dabs? How about that? Oh. 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 He just, he just, he just okay. The well, he ruined over. the first one, but uh, we're going to start off with an easy one. Just Wait, to kinda... that was the first one? Are you kidding me? D- I, yeah. See, you kinda... I said he's hungry. Okay, you know what? Oh we're going to start hungry. off. Hungry. Just Cash humor me, me DG. Explain to me what cash me outside. How about that means? For those who may not be familiar. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm just so choked up about it. Uh, this is from, how old was she? 12, 13, 10? 13. 10, a ten We'll say ten, an early 13. teenager that was on the, uh, the Dr. Phil show. And her language is so poor that it became a running meme. And I, have, I saw the original video and laughed because I was like, I had to have the subtitles on because I did not understand a word she was saying. And neither did Dr. Phil, evidently. But it's now uh, making the uh, the memograms all over the interwebs. The memograms. The memograms. The memograms. She actually got arrested like three, four days ago. She got kicked off a flight. Yeah, because yeah. apparently she tried to beat up a lady. But I believe what she, you know, if I can translate, she was saying, catch me outside, how about that? It was basically a dare to the audience, you know, because... I guess the only way that she deals with difficult people is uh, through violence. So she was daring the audience to check her outside later. And I actually to saw check another, her outside. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually saw another internet video supposedly involving the same uh, young lady, and they did catch her outside. And they fought. Yeah, they, they, like, they they caught her. Yeah. How about that? Oh, <laughs> oh she, man. Little little tidbit. Yeah. She uh, was in a. A, a, not I don't want to say famous, but like a popular, I guess, like hardcore rapper kind of guy, uh, Kodak Black. He was in one of her music videos, and then also she's gonna be back on Doctor Phil today at four o'clock. I oh, have it. No. I have it M- set to go watch it. Must I don't think TV. we're ready must, for more of this must girl. Must see TV of this girl coming back to Doctor Phil. Yes, but amazing. think of the meme potential. The meme potential. There's gonna be there, people bro. rolling tape on Doctor Phil today oh, yeah. in the hopes of new memes. In the trailer, she was like, she was like, you were nothing before I came on this show, and I was like. Oh, I wonder if she threatens know. her mother again. <laughs> Do- the, the internet will be waiting anxiously to Anxious. see what she says. And I, I think we're going to get a whole slew of very nice memes. When did Dr. Phil become Jerry Springer is my question. Right? That's a great question. I think, it's, I think it's always been kind of like a like a step down where he's like, he wants to help people, but he also wants people to go crazy on his show. At least he's not like... Brings Dr. in the ratings. At least he's not like Dr. Oz, though. Keep doing you, Phil. Keep doing you, Phil. We Keep all love doing you, Philip. Phil. All right. Well, let's move on to some other hard-to-understand English terminology. <laughs> Our next phrase is bad and bougie. Bad Popular bougie. song. 
Number one in the nation, actually. But yeah, I, sure. don't, I don't even know what this is. So I'm. Look, I'm gonna I'm let gonna Brandon explain the after term, this. But the term is bad and bougie. Bad yes, and yes, bougie. Sir. What do you know? That is your term. What do you know? Oh gosh! Off the bougie. top of your head, what do you got? Uh, well, let's see. Okay, I have to ask. So bad in in this sense is bad the young people's sense of it's actually good. So you call it bad, man. That's bad. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, you're on the yeah, right. Yeah, you're track. on the right track. Okay, all right. So, so you have the you have the first so far, and then all obviously right. you can you bougie. can put together bougie a little bit. Bougie, bougie is probably going to be bougie. a combination of two <laughs> words, and I wouldn't have the first idea what words it uh, boozy and I have no idea. Bougie. It's it's a tough one. I know this is one of the Bourgeois. more out there ones it's that French? we've thrown at you. Is it? <laughs> I, it's definitely not French. We'd, I, I don't think it's French. I don't know. We we have a French student he at the said, station. I'll ask her he later said on. The first word's but, probably boozies. I have no word. <laughs> I I don't think so. Brandon, uh, would you like to give the reveal what bad and bougie means to? Yeah. yeah. So so bad. Obviously, like you said, uh, is like a, another term for good. Um, it's talking about uh, a girl. Like she's she's very good looking. So she's bad. Okay, but bougie is obviously uh, me and Koki were talking about it, and it's kind of like uh, I guess acting like you're high class in like an ignorant fashion. I think so it's like a French bourgeois. term almost. Yeah. Bourgeois. bourgeois. Yeah, yeah, kind of. I think I think more it's so in like the Louisiana type the area. Word. You know, French kind of bougie would be like you think you're high class, but you're really not. Yeah, yeah, like like you're not high class. But I am you, high class. You act kind of ignorant. <laughs> We're always high class here at KTXT. Always on our best behavior, right, fellas? Uh, it's a job requirement. What do you mean? Uh, you're gonna hesitate on me? Ah, uh, come uh, on. We don't accept anyone that is bougie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, bad and bougie. Well, there you go. Uh, next up, DG is an interesting one. Uh, what comes to mind when I say the term Salt Bay? Now salt we have bay? gone over Bay before. In past episodes, of this is not maybe, okay. But okay. maybe we should let him. Like, I have to ask. No, clarif- point of clarification: When you yes. say "bay," are we talking B A Y? Are we talking B A E? B A E is the correct Zing. term. Okay, see, I'm on top of this. Yes, I'm on top of this. Okay, what you got? A salt bay. A salt, not not, not a salt, salt. A salt, just salt. Like you're putting <laughs> salts on a dish. Yeah, salt. That's bay. like a salty bay. How about that? <laughs> you, you're not, not cl- actually I mean, he's not very close it's, yeah, but no um i don't know Wait, would you like to give it a second shot that's a hard one dude no it's no he's not gonna give it okay this one's actually kind of hard to explain it, it's actually kind of a legend of sorts now so it's basically a legend of sorts it, it really is if you think about it so there was this viral video that went out i'm not even kidding of this guy cutting meat that was it and at the very end of the video, he has a very peculiar way of pouring salt on the meat. He kind of uh, puts his arm in a crane formation and pours the salt, you know, kind of very lightly with his fingertips. It and it pours, looks. like, onto his forearms. But he's kind of a cool-looking dude. He's got some sunglasses on. He seems to do it with, you know, a lot of finesse. finesse. So he pours it onto uh, his forearm, basically. And now it's become kind of a meme. This guy is now an internet sensation. Now there's tons of videos. You gotta of him check. Just I love all the edited cookies. ones of them, though. What does the B A E? What does that stand for? Because he's hot. Because apparently the ladies <laughs> think he's a good-looking man, so they call him Salt Bay. So oh, he just does okay. the. He, I've never I, seen anybody. I, he's got when style, he cuts man. that he's meat. I was style. like, yo, this is so. Tight. If he but was the, shredding the lettuce Aaron and Rogers. creating coleslaw, and he was doing it with garlic, he'd be garlic bay. I get it. I can see where this. I goes. get yeah, garlic. Bay. I get so. There is an ingredient called bay leaves. So yeah, he like silenced them. I knew uh, they, couldn't, they yeah. couldn't keep up. It's it's just very interesting. I mean, literally, all this guy's videos are are just. Him cooking in the kitchen. Like, he has like really but he does it good with, knife skills. Yeah, like he, like, he just does it with a little bit of style, and it's just really just finesse. appealing to watch. I don't have know. You, have you seen satisfying. like what they do where people edit them, like Photoshop <laughs> that that gif of that, like yeah. Matt Ryan cutting the up the cheese when he beat and, uh, the Packers. Oh, pouring and then, a little salt. And then he's salt. pouring some yep. L's. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. So that that in what a nutshell is the Salt Bay, the legend himself. Who was the chef in Ratatouille? That's who I'm thinking of. The the mouse. The mouse. No, the chef, that the chef that passed away. Anyone oh, oh, can Gusteau. spoilers. Gusto. Spoilers. Gusto. That's right. <laughs> I haven't seen it, DG. <laughs> so Gusto. Well, in like ruined. ten years. <laughs> That's a great movie. It's guys. it's hard Gusteau to compare. I don't know. Bay. Salt Bay looks okay. like he's the king of the kitchen as of right now, at least according to the internet. 
So there you go. Those are your terms of the day. Um, very interesting stuff. We would love to hear your comments and feedback, what you guys think on Facebook about Salt Bay, Catch Me Outside, and uh, what was an Oh, Bad and Bougie. Your thoughts, your suggestions on maybe bad some other terms bougie. we can discuss in future episodes of GMTT. But uh, what we're going to go ahead and do... I <laughs> uh, heard that little throw to uh, Bad and Bougie. See, he's already learning. This is an educational experience, Salt ladies Bay. and gentlemen. Salt Bay, there you go. Wow. Well, Great before job. this gets any creepier, we're going to go ahead and go to another quick music break. Don't go anywhere, folks. It's Friday, GMTT. We're going to catch DG outside at some point. Not yet, because we still got the rest of the episode to go. Here is Stan of Oaks, Radio Kids. Hey, that's us. Don't go anywhere. Hello, Facebook audience. Thank you for sticking with us. Let's go ahead and check out some of the comments now that we have a little bit of time to kill. Caleb Hill says, do Ooh, you whip or do you mayone? I think he meant nine I, I think he meant nine No, I think he meant mayone. I, I think he meant exactly what he said. <laughs> and I'm going to defend him on this one. <laughs> that's right. Bri um, Brian Germane is always defending it. <laughs> oh, always that's, that's, my, that's my boy Caleb Hill from uh, Tulsa. Okay. That's that's my buddy right there. He's asking if that's a prof. Actually, Caleb, that is our uh, awesome boss, Derek Ginter. He's the GM here at KTC. He's kind of a prof of sorts. Yeah. Kind of, of an unconventional, sorts. but... The prophecy. Yeah. <laughs> the prophecy. The prophecy. Has he's from, he's from where? T Caleb? Caleb from Tulsa? Yeah. Cool. Got some listeners from Tulsa. He went to a uh, broadcasting school with me, so he yeah. actually, he has some broadcasting background too. DG. He's got some skills. If he's ever in Lubbock, Texas, we'll have to get him on there. Yeah, bring him by. I'll even buy him lunch. Yeah, there you go. So uh, no, that's Caleb, cool. Caleb so does shout does out to Caleb. Caleb. Caleb does like lunch, so he does, does the mayo. Like lunch. He'll he'll want mayo for lunch. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we saw. We were not. We were not yeah. When I lived there, our, our lunch place was uh, on the border. He's all about the Mexican food. You know what I'm saying? That's not. Hey, I mean, hey, how could hey, you not be? Yeah. Wait, come, wait, come, wait. come with like, me and Brian. We'll teach you some. some, of, some of yeah. Okay, DJ. Just get off. Hey, shout, much. Much. shout out to Abel Medina, who's also watching. Yeah, good Abel old Medina. pops, aka the Tejano legend. The Tejano a legend. A grupo pasión. <laughs> the man, the myth. <laughs> We're going to be playing some You're going to have to translate sure. Mr. Medina, not everyone in the show. Alrighty, so uh, my dad was a Tejano <laughs> singer um, for a band called Pasión. 
Easily, easily a top 10 Donald Ben of all time. Salty. Easily. Are you sure your opinion isn't a little bit biased there? Maybe, but I also know facts, Brian. So facts are facts, son. Oh, he's standing firm. Okay. Uh, And I think uh, he came in second to Selena. So in a little, like, I guess, talent. Uh, contest kind of thing so I think that was pretty oh, cool so we're all t- second to Selena Tahano <laughs> we're all second to Selena except we're, he we're actually has like you know like the picture to prove it but okay. uh, <laughs> the man the myth the legend I'm telling you my no dad way. shout out yeah yeah we need that this what, was a, what a great man Tahano legend Cowboys fan yeah. Spurs yes. Spurs fanatic Spurs keeps you fanatic. in line like other than the <laughs> Cowboys thing sounds this, like a great man this man's a legend Honestly, honestly, he is my dad, and then my lovely mother always watching. She told us, uh, that, Mama Medina she saying. told us, don't listen to them, Haley. The boys, boys will be boys. Mom, you're supposed to support me. <laughs> I, I go against you. You're just going deliberately. You gotta realize, man. you gotta realize, show. mom, uh, Haley's not your child, mother. I am, so <laughs> you're a grown boy. You should, you should know better. Oh my God. Listen to your mother. Medina, listen to your mother. Well, thank you all so much for that. Uh, do we have time for a quick unboxing? Oh, well, thank you. We got three minutes. That's plenty of time for yeah, yeah, a quick yeah. unboxing. I mean, uh, did you, did you wanna... already unwrap all of them? I did. Okay, well, like give us a quick glimpse of uh, some of the goodies you received. Oh, we got oh, some yeah. new music. The, all, yeah. all the music that I'm about to show you is about to be on our station next Tuesday. Facebook saw it first. Yeah, so Dominant uh, Goodnight Doggies is going to be... Goodnight Doggies. Goodnight right. Doggies. I'll try to I'm always uh, impressed with these band names <laughs> yeah, they're that, that you they're always let yeah. me know about. Right? They're crazy. Molly Birch crazy name yeah. uh <laughs> with please be mine this is also gonna be a great great album all these are from my friends brooklyn new york represent from terror bird they're amazing promotion company that sends me all the great music how all the great that? music how uh, about that indeed, i don't do you, i don't DJ. even know how to respond to that what is this one you say catch me outside uh, what you got there this one is sin Kane, life Sin and can. live in it. Yo, yeah. Life also, look end. out, look the out, big man. Red machine. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be dropping a mixtape here. I'm gonna put in on an, 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 an Annie Cokies. Like uh, CDs, How about an MP3? So. Yeah, we can do MP3. <laughs> like, put on the radio. Just everybody will trip out. But who is I don't this? think we take cassettes anymore. Man. <laughs> no, <laughs> we'll do shameless self promotion later give, in the show. Give a vinyl. <laughs> Again, a vinyl. And uh, just to give everybody a preview, we are talking uh, Valentine's Day next Uh-oh. segment. The Uh-oh. day of love. Yeah. The day of love. It's gonna get interesting. It's actually or get that single week. awareness day. Or yeah, single like awareness. Yeah. Why do you have to remind me? Yeah, we, when we bring it in, we no, gotta be like, I'm just saying. Welcome. To even though I'm married, it's still single awareness day to me. Or <laughs> oh, my oh. wife made it quite clear that I am not to bring her roses, flowers of any kind. But oh, you on the fifteenth. On the 15th. It's reverse psychology, DG. Don't fall for it. Half price candy is what she expects. Oh. Nice. I mean, I don't blame nice. her for that one. I, yeah. Me and uh, Andrew are going to buy each other. Mrs. G knows where it's at. Me and Andrew are going to buy each other those 50-piece uh, nuggets from Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. Yeah. I mean, that's the key to my heart. <laughs> you can buy 50-piece stuff. nuggets? In the shape of a heart. In the shape of heart. And I think Pizza Hut is doing a, a pizza-shaped uh, heart. All right. Just whatever. Whatever. A heart, heart-shaped pizza. I got that wrong. Stick with us. <laughs> All right. Let's toss it over. See you safe. Facebook. See ya. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Friday GMTT. We got a little bit of time to spend with you guys, and we need to sit down and have a nice talk, and let the love experts guide you oh, on this. Yes. When are uh, they gonna get here? When they gonna I don't get know. Here? So oh, we're gonna have to fill in for the meantime. Oh, us? So let's go ahead and discuss Valentine's Day a little bit. So um, I think we're all single here. Is that welcome to is that yeah. correct? <laughs> so right off the bat, sub ladies, you should take our. Uh, <laughs> I said sub ladies. Our love advice experts. with. Our love experts, experts in quotes. In quotes. Well, yeah. uh, clearly we have a lot of success, so we need to. Clearly, our, we need to let the people know our expertise. Oh, expertise. So, gentlemen, what are your Valentine's Day plans? First of all, bad um, bougie. Wake up late. <laughs> wake up late. Okay, I can dig it. Um, I think for me, yeah. I will be definitely looking at all the NBA All Star Game stuff. It's usually on Valentine's Day weekend or so. Okay. Um, and then, uh, me and Andrew are gonna purchase each other. 
a fifty piece Chick Fil A heart shaped Nuggets box. Yeah. Just just out of gonna just eat our heart out. Just out, out of good friendship. You know what I mean? No yeah. love okay. for each other. <laughs> I hope you do that friendship <laughs> like food. I hope you do that cross okay. thing where you feed each other. Uh, Andrew, any specific plans Valentine's Day? Well, Valentine's Day is on a Tuesday, correct? So we're Actually, all gonna so. be here working. So it's great, okay, great Valentine's. Yeah, it's, 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 at least it's, we got it's, something it's, to keep our minds off of. You know, yeah, it's my longest single. day. So but I have a question for you guys. Sure. Valentine's Day candy. DG talked about it on Facebook Live. Are you guys like the Hershey? Kiss type uh, people, or Ooh. like me, do you go for the mini Reese's peanut butter cups? I'm the Ooh. anything that's edible kind of guy, personally. <laughs> uh, I think I enjoy the corny, like, hey, you want to kiss, like little Hershey kiss, but I also uh, really would much I prefer uh, Reese's over it's all about the oh, peanut I thought you were about man. to say a real kiss. Yeah, well, that too. But. I mean, that too, that would be <laughs> honestly like over Canada. Come on, like, maybe <laughs> I'll, still I'll still take the Reese's probably, honestly. <laughs> He's got a point there. It's hard to argue that. Uh, so. And uh, Peeps, are they overrated? Or overrated, overrated, absolutely. Overrated. I like trash. Peeps. Shut what? Your mouth. Get out of here. Peeps, that's Easter. You're, yeah, you're, like, why are we talking they, about Peeps? They have pink Peeps Every holiday for Valentine's now? Day. Are you kidding me? But I'm already Every hanging with my Peeps. Cash me Bro, they love Peeps, I guess. I don't know. I'm just, that's just my two cents. Okay, so, fellas. That's just bad key, and bougie. Like, ideal, <laughs> valid, <laughs> ideal Valentine's date ideas what comes for us or for our in general yep, like okay, I got it. like where would you like if you found a lovely lady for valentine's date found where would you, you take her uh i would go to any of the nice ponds or lakes here in the lubbock area that'd be nice and then um <laughs> hey which one exactly would that be <laughs> uh i like the one on 82nd street uh, if you know where that is, but yeah. If, if you, you know, know where that is. And then you take her downtown no. to uh, to uh, Italian Gardens, and then Italian you take Gardens. her to the uh, the pie bar. Pie bar is always good. Overrated. For dessert. Pie bar is overrated. Uh, oh, get out of here. Uh, but no, I was about to say, yeah. take her on a paddle, bo- uh, paddle boat ride. It's my fave. Yeah. Take out the okay. To take paddle a page book. out of Blink-182, a- though, I would wear some cologne to get the feeling right. That's all I'm saying. Hey. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm digging it. Mr. Medina, ideal um, Valentine's date. Um, I always bought out on Valentine's actually. The past like four years when I did have uh, a significant other, I always bought like concert tickets and stuff for like oh, like, like that. Concert's like, always I, good. So that that'd be like the opening present. They'd be like, oh, but also doesn't end there. Garth We're Bulls. going to dinner. <laughs> like, but like obviously, like as a broke costume, I can I like I can push Olive Garden, but that's a one time thing. Like, you better be really appreciative. <laughs> you better be special. And, like you better be He's special. Taking you to Olive Garden. Uh, free breadsticks, bro. I'm telling you, dude. Yeah, we just do free breadsticks and then we dip. We leave after the free breadsticks. <laughs> free breadsticks and water. <laughs> free breadsticks and water okay. depending on how you act it's either that or orlando so. yeah it's, it's, it's either that or maybe like a little italian and a lot of fun some some jack-in-the-box tacos <laughs> it's, either, it's up to you know but uh for sure I, i'm down olive well, garden yeah. i'm down um i would really like appreciate just kind of like like any said like kind of like going to like a lake or something okay. but also i'm a huge Definitely into like music and stuff too so i love mm-hmm. like Relax and listen to the vinyls, put some candles on, get to talking. Oh, don't listen to this guy. He said ball out, which is code for I play 2K. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. That's what, Facts. That's what that's, he's going to be doing. That's how this year's Valentine's is going. I'll be playing 2K. <laughs> DG, how are you treating the spouse for Valentine's Day? DG. DG. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I was not paying attention. <laughs> that's okay. I, I was being, I was, oh, anyway. What was the question? How are you treating the spouse, the wife, for Valentine's Day? What's your plan? Well, you know, I really can't divulge too much because uh, word will get back down to her and then it'll spoil the surprise. It's a, oh, Ooh, this is a surprise. surprise. Okay. Um, I don't know. We may do Alamo. Oh, Alamo Draft oh. House. There's a, I think a there choice. may be a couple of movies or something we might be interested in watching. A good um, crier movie. But as I told you Chick-fil- earlier on Facebook Live, you know, she she gave me under – I'm under strict orders from the from the wife. No flowers. What? On Valentine's Day. Wow. She would trick. much rather have twice the amount of half price candy on the fifteenth. So Wednesday, you know, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be hitting Walmart and all the drug stores when they're get, trying to get rid of all that candy and we're just going to just score. Do you feel that like as someone who's been in like obviously a super serious relationship and is like in a marriage and everything like that, do you think that like flowers are overrated? No. I think flowers uh, there used to be a great poster. And I can't remember that it was it was put out by the floral industry, and it was basically I'm going to paraphrase it, but basically flowers allow men to get out of the worst situations. Facts. So, uh, I, I would you know I I don't I don't know a single female on the planet that does not appreciate flowers every once in a while, but you have to understand it's an expensive proposition. There's a reason why floral shops are still in business and doing gangbuster business this time of year. Uh, so if you're going to do it, uh, order early. 
get your order in and hopefully they can get the flowers delivered in time. But it's it's going to be pricey. My my wife, I did discover early in our relationship, she does not go for the usual uh, flower accoutrements. You know, the roses, not so much. Uh, but she likes all of these weird interesting and unique flower varieties that are very difficult to find. Mix it up a little bit. Like orchids? So, not orchids. No. Oh. No. But uh, she likes she likes uh, the various colors, you know, because what is what is the predominant color on Valentine's Day? It's going to be red Purple. or yeah. velvet red or shades of red. She doesn't know. 50 go shades of red. Yeah, exactly. Oh. I would love to do like 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 the what's the what's the fruit bouquet or whatever? The little oh, oh, edible arrangements. Edible edible arrangements. Cookie bouquet. I was thinking about that. Those are a winner, dog. Those yeah. are a winner. Edible arrangements. Yes. All right. Well, you've heard it here from the love experts and right. Hey, I gotta just say one more thing to all the ladies out there. Valentine's Day is overrated. If it was me, every day would be Valentine's Look Day. Look at this guy. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Scud of the day goes Buzzer to beater. Andrew Marks. And on that <laughs> note, we're going to end it here on Goodfella Friday, GMTT. Thank you all so much for tuning in and watching on Facebook Live. We'll be back next week. And don't forget to tune in to Woman Crush Wednesdays as well. Same time, same place. You know what to do. See you guys next time. How about that? How about that? It's Undercurrents. I'm Greg McVicker. Welcome. Glad to have you with us. Uh, man, we've got some good music coming up.